Hi there. My name is Ariadne Albright, and I'm a roster artist with the South Dakota Arts Council. Very excited today that um, I'm sharing one more of my projects with you. Um, this one's called uh, The Ingredients of an Artwork, and it's a visual art and writing assignment. We'll get right into it. So this looks a little complicated, but it's an overview of the project. Um, you'll only need uh, either internet access or art history books, um, something that would visually show you a masterpiece. And um, smartphone is going to be helpful or a digital camera. Um, and then some writing tool, pencil and paper. Um, and then there's an optional uh, supplies needed like scissors um, and things that you can find around the house essentially. And what we're going to do is uh, I'll do a quick review of the elements of art and principles of design, which are the building blocks of every work of art. And then we're going to recreate it um, using a couple tools that I'll talk to you about later. And I'll show you some examples too, because this is as, as dry and black and white as this slide is, it's becoming a very popular activity um, for those of us that are spending more time at home. Okay, so um, the elements, like I said, uh, are, the, are the basic building blocks of a work of art. And here are examples of line. And line has a lot of different qualities um, and it does a lot of different things. So um, I won't go into specifics about um, implied line compared to um, vertical or horizontal, I think. Um, sometimes pictures communicate even more than than words but um, the ex the exploration or the variety of line is absolutely infinite I am going to show you a lot of uh, masterpieces and when we're talking about line it's um, it's kind of wonderful to see two very similar works in the way that they're created and how this sort of curving organic line communicates something very different than the angular jagged line. Here's a more contemporary um, installation, meaning that it takes up an entire space in a gallery, that line is a principal element it's one of the most dominant things that you see in this work. Another element is uh, shape, and shape and mass. Shape is for flat surfaces or two-dimensional, and mass is, is for sculpture, three-dimensional and in the round. This is a really um, interesting illustration to me that I use in other classes because the actual shape is the the black um, areas um, but because of its placement it's implying a third shape we see this white box um, because of the proximity always been fascinated by those uh, mass again as i was saying different than shape but the same family and certainly um, batero's bulky bulbous horse um, you can get this sense of power and strength through mass. And there's um, Giacometti's man pointing. Mass is used in a different way where it's, uh, there's almost a fragility. And part of that is because um, the long outstretched arms and legs, um, they, they talk about activating the space around it in that the, what's above and below becomes part of the the work of art and sculpture, of course, is one uh, one of the main qualities is that we walk around and we see it from multiple dimensions. 
space, another element um, of art, and this is a physical space, but certainly um, many of the principles even though we're not physically in this airport right now, when we look at it, um, we're interpreting, our brain is interpreting these visual clues that uh, uh, we understand as being deep space. But different cultures look at space differently. And it's um, kind of interesting to see this wall painting from um, early Egypt and the depiction of space here is a reflection of um, the values of, of the culture. And so you see trees and plants and a fish and birds, but instead of them overlapping in, in this depth of field, they're depicted next to each other with very little overlap so that you can see all the details clearly and everything is, is communicating in a similar way. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's some of our visual clues that I was talking about in terms of uh, space in two dimension. Overlap, getting smaller in size, different placements in uh, the rectangle picture plane and a combination of many. Mm -hmm. um, that's another example of space, both of these and how they're depicting uh, either atmosphere or still life. Another uh, element of art is value, and value is a darkness of light, uh, dark to light, and that can either be in black and white or it can be a value of a color, going from a light version to a dark. And this is a really good example of um, the Lincoln Memorial that's lit in two different ways and how uh, dramatic the meaning of the sculpture changes with the different lighting. Um, on the left hand side was the original lighting and it was uh, from underneath the, the big sculpture and it, um, it upset the artist and, and the viewers because it didn't communicate that commanding strength of uh, one of our um, great American leaders. Instead, uh, by changing the lighting to a, up above, strengthening the brow and, uh, and, you know, creating that content or that look that the artist intended. Um, another one of those fun illustrations that I can't help but include, and that's because um, value uh, changes depending on what it's next to. That's one of the more interesting qualities. So when you're looking at this example, that um, sort of like a sideways I, that is the same value all the way through, but because of the, the, lighter, um, the lighter gray around it on the left-hand side or the darker almost black on the right-hand side, the perception in our brain is that it changes too from lighter to darker gray, which I think is fascinating. Um, well, this piece is using literal light and also a line. It's a neon light. Mm -hmm. Color is another element of art. The good news is a lot of this is just refresher for you because uh, these elements and principles are talked about all the way from grade school up through graduate school, depending on your field of study. And um, this slide, although it would take me a second to unpack it, but um, it's about how white light in, is really a combination of all these um, uh, uh, light, excuse me, um, colors that um, travel at different uh, speed. And so um, by interrupting or uh, angling that white light, we can see the entire spectrum of um, the visual range that human beings can see. Mm. So this is a little bit more um, complex color theory than we need to know 
for this exercise, but some of you already know that the primary colors are yellow, red, and blue, and then we, there's just an infinite combination of secondaries, tertiaries, analogous, complementary, all these different relationships which help us understand the world that we see and how to represent or recreate it when we make our own work. So just being able to identify um, colors in a general way is a good tool to have. Not 100% not necessary, um, but it certainly is what this slide is about. So with um, this more contemporary, uh, very simple graffiti painting from Keith Haring, the color scheme that's being used is complementary or opposite of a color wheel. Um, easy way to remember that is it's Christmas colors. Another element is uh, texture. It's either uh, actual texture that if you rubbed your hands on or, or touched, you would feel um, a variety of surfaces or visual texture where things are um, created to represent uh, different textures. Oops. For example, the Van Gogh piece that we saw had actual texture and this movie still um, certainly has a lot of implied dust and metal and atmosphere of sky and smoke and etc. Then we have principles of design which are using the elements and um, in, in ways of organizing and one of the um, principles is unity which um, we have a, a variety of, of um, different elements but overall uh, artists are often seeking unity or visual harmony. So in this case, we've got the darks and the lights contrasting. We have the warmth of maybe the orange and the reds um, and the dramatic lines or um, diagonals, but, and then even the repetition of the number five and some of those round elements, but overall, with uh, all those elements, there is this unified and dynamic design. Uh, well, certainly this one could be said to be very unified, untitled, uh, simply one color. Looks like a, a plank form, flat, uh, unified uh, form, yellow slab, or, yep, leaned up against the wall. I would say that's a good example of unity. But of course we can, there's quite a range. Um, here, here with Jacob Lawrence, we can see a variety, but also um, how unifying it is. Uh, the colors are a limited palette, the green, red, black, white, um, yellows, the shapes are unified in that they're um, more geometric and based on circles, rectangles, triangles. But the, the variety includes bits of pattern, um, diagonal shapes breaking up this visual rhythm. And again, these elements and principles are, are helpful tools to um, understand what we're looking at rather than going, oh, that's cool. Oh, I see that. Um, it slows our mind down and uh, gives us uh, systems in which to look at. Balance is another principle of design and a symmetrical balance is easy to remember because it looks like uh, if you cut it in the middle, it would be a mirror image. And certainly our White House in DC um, is an example of architecture and design that's based on balance and unity. And uh, in this case, what it communicates is, is strength, history, and, um, and power because of its certainty. There's also asymmetrical balance where a piece can still um, 
look unified overall, but there are different areas of emphasis and it's not symmetrical. And certainly um, this piece, we could take a, a great amount of time talking about what unifies it and then what is also um, uh, asymmetrical or unbalanced about the piece. Movement. Um, in some sculpture, there's actual movement where things revolve and move, but in, in a, a two-dimensional piece that's flat, the movement is implied. And again, like with the dynamic lines and diagonals, light and dark, um, in Francisco Goya's um, print here, there's a lot of implied movement within the audience, the bullfighter, the bull. And um, again, there's lots of ways we could stop and take a look at how this still image is communicating all that drama. Rhythm is a principle of design, and that's um, based on repeating repetitious um, forms. And then a rhythm is a break in that pattern um, that, like in this case, there's groupings of these cranes and the rhythm of the heads of these tall necks is, is almost um, comical in their personality. Proportion is a principle of design. And again, this is one of those visual um, tools that make you really um, question what you're seeing, uh, much like the one about value. The center circles are exactly the same size, but depending on what's in proximity or next to it, um, our eye really tells us a different story about the size. So uh, proportion is about um, relationships of, of um, parts of a work of art and, and how they relate to each other. Um, proportion can be uh, sort of demonstrated in Oldenburg uh, shuttlecock, which is like a badminton bird only this is in front of a museum and the proportion or scale of this piece is absolutely outsized. And so um, a lot of his artwork was about having us stop and consider ordinary things in our life. Um, hamburgers, spoons, in this case, the badminton bird, um, because they were recreated in this sort of giant size scale. Um, Michelangelo's Pieta, or the Pity, the, the Mother Mary and the, um, the crucified Christ, uh, is very interesting when we talk about um, scale and proportion. Michelangelo, the sculptor, was so masterful at making the folds of the gown um, communicate or convey this um, large lap that the mother was holding this adult um, child. And they say that um, if she was actually to stand up, um, she would be more like um, seven feet tall. But in the case of the folds of the garment, it makes um, it a very pleasing and reasonable proportion to look at. Um, even though these two pieces, Michelangelo's Pieta and the Rottingen's uh, Pieta are the same subject, you can see how, um, depending on what was emphasized, how different uh, a tone is communicated. And also the materials too communicate something completely different, even though it's um, essentially the same subject. Okay, so now we're ready for this um, ingredient of an artwork, uh, visual art and writing assignment. And um, what I'm gonna have you do, <laughs> and because I just did it myself, 
is we've done a review of the elements and principles of design. So now you'll need to find either in a book or online a masterpiece that's going to be the subject of your project. And um, we're going to describe it in terms of like a recipe, which means it's going to be a pretty um, simple recipe. We're, we're not going to dive too deep, but we want to pause and take a look at a work of art in terms of some of those elements of art and principle of design. And I'm going to show you how I did it. And then after we finish the recipe where we've stopped and we've taken a look at, okay, like what are the big parts of this piece? What's it made of, up of? Is it, is it symmetrical? Is it about color? Is it about texture? Uh, repetition, you know, just kind of spending a minute figuring out what it is we're looking at. Then, so after the recipe, then we're going to get up from the computer, which was maddening to me, um, and start looking around for materials in our, in our homes, our bedrooms, out in the garage, outside, that we could use to recreate this piece in a very simple way, but recreate it in terms of color and composition, um, just for fun. And then take a picture of it and we'll get it uploaded so we can look. Um, okay, so let's see. Pick a masterpiece, did that, uh, which is gonna be the subject, and then quote, unpack or describe the artwork in terms of a written recipe. So your uh, recipe is like one part of this or half of that. Use very simple proportions, uh, two thirds, one half, two parts. And then the elements I wrote out here again, line, shape, form, value, color, texture, principles, unity, balance, contrast, movement, pattern, rhythm, and emphasis. And um, again, the goal is to think and play. And the good news is this isn't graded, but it's a pretty good challenge. On the right, or excuse me, left-hand side, these were masterpieces that I was looking at as possibilities. And you're welcome to use these or others that you find. Um, it looks like that's a Jan Rainier piece at the, uh, at the top. Uh, Paul Gauguin on the left, and then uh, Vincent van Gogh on the right. Um, and a recipe is going to be the title of the artwork that you select, the artist that created it, and then the elements and principles in their amounts. So here's my, here's my creation. Um, it is a recipe for El Benderdo, De Alatreses Calla Lily Vendor by Diego Rivera. And um, the main elements that I saw were color and value. So four parts, light, white, and yellow. See how simple the proportions are? Three parts, black and brown, and one part, blue and green. So that makes up eight, eight parts. Huh. Um, mix rounded shapes. I've, I've bolded the elements or principles throughout. Add line to flower stems, basket, and girl. Balance, it's a symmetrical balance of girl, scarf, and basket of flowers in the center of painting. Rhythm of many, many flowers creates unity in the painting. So that's my recipe. And then I ran around the house and got scarves. And there's my example up above. And the only thing I could find in multitudes uh, that looked like the little bit like the lilies were rolls of toilet paper. Forgive me. <laughs> okay, so here is some examples that were on the internet. Um, where they've recreated their masterpiece. And of course, some people are really taking a lot of time 
I thought it was interesting that the Mona Lisa was done all in um, peas and grains of rice, um, different food items. Just make sure you ask permission if it isn't yours. And then if you're interested in uh, finding out more, there are lots of online trends of people recreating these masterpieces at home or in the case of the piece on the um, on the right uh, recreating famous artworks with their pets that's a medieval tapestry um, on the left and a little pug dog so thank you i hope this is fun i hope it um i hope it stimulates some creativity and if you want to um, connect with me please please do by going to my website, creativecarellc.com. Otherwise, um, I look forward to seeing what you come up with on the uh, South Dakota Arts Council website. Thank you.